Phoenix, Carey, felt the weight of the world on his shoulders. Each day, it pressed down a little harder. His bills, a stack of menacing white envelopes, seemed to multiply overnight. The cost of living was a relentless tide pulling him under. He worked tirelessly, his job a monotonous grind, yet he fell further behind. Every siren, every honking horn, grated on his nerves. His small apartment, once a sanctuary, was now a constant reminder of his financial struggles. Sleep offered no escape, only a relentless loop of worry that followed him into the darkness. Phoenix was trapped. The American dream, once so tantalizingly close, now felt like a cruel illusion. He felt invisible, another face lost in the crowd. The system, he realized, was designed to keep him down. The rising cost of health care, the stagnant wages, the ever-increasing price of basic necessities. It felt like a conspiracy to crush the working class. His once bright eyes, now clouded with worry, reflected the harsh reality of his situation. Each day felt like a battle against an unyielding tide, a tide that threatened to consume him entirely. He had dreams once, aspirations for a better life. One thought began to take root in his mind, a dark and desperate seed. It whispered promises of release, of an end to his suffering. Suicide. The word hung in the air, heavy and final. At first, it was just a fleeting thought, quickly dismissed. But like a weed, it grew stronger with each passing day, fueled by his despair. The idea began to consume him, offering a perverse sense of control in a world that seemed determined to crush him. Death, he realized, was the ultimate escape. Phoenix wasn't always drowning in debt. He used to dream, just like everyone else. He had aspirations, goals that seemed within reach. He pictured a future filled with love, laughter, and a modest home filled with the aroma of freshly baked bread. He met Sarah during those hopeful years. Her laughter was contagious. Her eyes sparkled with a zest for life. They were young and naive, believing love could conquer all. Phoenix, fueled by love and ambition, worked tirelessly to build a life with her. Those dreams, once so vivid, now seemed like faded photographs from someone else's life. The first blow came with the economic downturn. The company he'd dedicated years to, the one he thought would see him through retirement, crumbled under the weight of the recession. He lost his job, his savings dwindled, and the future he meticulously planned for slipped through his fingers like grains of sand. I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and jumped back into the job market. But the landscape had changed. Jobs were scarce, wages were lower, and the competition was fierce. I took whatever work I could find, each job a step down from the last. The bills piled up, each one a reminder of his shrinking world. The apartment, once filled with the promise of a future, became a symbol of his failure. He tried everything to stay afloat. He took on extra shifts, worked odd jobs, and even swallowed his pride to ask for help from family. But the hole he was in only seemed to grow deeper. The promises of politicians, the empty assurances of a better tomorrow, rang hollow in my ears. The system, I realized, was rigged against me, designed to keep me down, to crush my spirit. He saw the same desperation in the eyes of his neighbors, in the faces of strangers he passed on the street. It was during one particularly bleak night, as he lay awake staring at the cracks in his ceiling, that the thought first entered his mind. A dark, insidious thought that whispered of escape, of a permanent solution to his temporary problems. Suicide. The word hung in the air, heavy and final. He recoiled from the thought at first, horrified by its audacity. Phoenix stared into the mirror, but the reflection staring back was a stranger. His eyes, once filled with hope and ambition, were now hollowed out pits of despair. 
Lines of worry etched deep into his face, a roadmap of sleepless nights and endless anxieties. He barely recognized the gaunt, defeated figure staring back at him. The thought, once a whisper, now roared in his ears, a constant drumbeat to his growing desperation. Suicide. The very word sent a chill down his spine, yet it held a strange, magnetic pull. Night after night, he lay awake, locked in a silent battle with his own mind. He bargained with fate, with God, with anyone who would listen. If only he could catch a break, a stroke of luck, anything to pull him back from the brink. He remembered a time, not so long ago, when laughter came easily, when the future seemed full of promise. He pictured Sarah's radiant smile, her infectious laughter, and a deep ache resonated in his chest. One day, while walking home from another dead-end job interview, his gaze fell upon a discarded newspaper. An article, tucked away on the back page, caught his eye. It spoke of a local charity, a lifeline for those drowning in debt. Hope, unexpected and fragile, flickered within him. Could this be the answer he had been searching for? He clung to this glimmer of possibility, this faint ray of light in the overwhelming darkness. Maybe, just maybe, there was a way out, a way to reclaim his life. As the woman listened patiently, offering words of comfort and support, a new thought began to take shape in Phoenix's mind. It was a dark thought, a twisted solution born of desperation and despair. If he were to end his life, his life insurance policy, he pushed the thought away, disgusted with himself. Was this what he had been reduced to? Calculating the monetary value of his own life? The idea, once unthinkable, now clung to Phoenix like a second skin. His life, he decided, had no value. But his death could provide for Sarah, a twisted act of love in the face of utter despair. He knew what he had to do. He needed to find someone who dealt in darkness, someone who could make his death look like an accident. He started in the shadows, asking questions he never thought he'd utter. Whispers of a bookie, a man who could arrange anything for a price, reached him in hushed tones. The information felt dangerous, forbidden, and it only solidified his resolve. The bar was dingy, the air heavy with the smell of stale beer and despair. Men huddled in corners, their faces etched with a lifetime of hard living. Phoenix felt out of place, a ghost in a world he didn't belong to. He spotted the bookie in the back, his imposing figure casting a long shadow over the room. The man, they called him Razor, was all sharp angles and cold eyes. His voice, a gravelly rasp, sent shivers down Phoenix's spine. You want to hire me to kill you? The words hung in the air, heavy and final. Razor named his price, a figure that made Phoenix's stomach clench. It was more than he could afford, but he'd figure it out. He had to. This was his only way out, his only chance to provide for Sarah, to erase his failures. They agreed on the details, a staged accident, quick and clean. No loose ends, Razor promised, his eyes cold and calculating. Phoenix felt a wave of nausea wash over him, but he pushed it down. He had made his choice. There was no turning back. As he left the bar, stepping back into the night, he felt a strange sense of detachment, as if he were watching his life unfold from a distance. He was a ghost, a phantom tethered to the world by a single terrible thread. The city lights, once a symbol of hope, now seemed to mock him with their indifference. He was a stranger in his own life, a man living on borrowed time. The weight of his decision pressed down on him, suffocating him with its finality. Phoenix returned to his apartment, the familiar surroundings now tinged with a strange unreality. He went through the motions of his life, his actions mechanical, his thoughts a jumbled mess. He couldn't shake the feeling that he was living in a dream, a nightmare from which he couldn't wake. He began to make arrangements, putting his affairs in order. 
He wrote a letter to Sarah, his hand trembling as he poured his heart out onto the page. He begged for her forgiveness, explaining his actions as best he could. He wanted her to understand, to know that he loved her, that this was his final act of love, his way of ensuring her future. He withdrew the last of his savings, the money feeling cold and foreign in his hands. He left the envelope with the letter and the money in their shared drawer, a silent goodbye to the woman he loved. As the day of the accident approached, a strange calm settled over him. He had made his peace, or at least he told himself he had. He was ready to face the abyss, to embrace the darkness. The wheels of fate were in motion and he was powerless to stop them. He was trapped in the gears of his own desperate plan, hurtling towards an inevitable end. The days leading up to the arranged accident were a blur. Phoenix moved through life like a ghost, his actions mechanical, his thoughts a distant echo. The weight of his decision pressed down on him, a suffocating blanket of guilt and dread. He found himself drawn to places that held memories, both good and bad, as if trying to grasp onto the remnants of a life slipping away. He wandered through the park where he and Sarah had their first date, the air thick with the scent of blooming lilacs, just like that day. He could almost hear her laughter, see the sparkle in her eyes as she teased him relentlessly. The memory, once a source of comfort, now felt like a shard of glass in his chest. He found himself standing outside their favorite restaurant, the aroma of garlic and oregano wafting out onto the street. He pictured their laughter, the clinking of wine glasses, the way Sarah would always steal bites off his plate. Now the restaurant stood as a painful reminder of shared meals, of intimate conversations, of a love slowly fading under the weight of their troubles. Everywhere he looked, ghosts of his past haunted him. Each memory, each shared smile, each whispered secret amplified the weight of his decision. He was drowning in a sea of regret, yet he clung to the hope that his sacrifice would save Sarah from the same fate. He found himself engaging in meaningless conversations, fleeting connections with strangers that only served to highlight his own isolation. He offered a polite smile to the barista at his usual coffee shop, exchanged pleasantries with the cashier at the grocery store, all the while feeling like an imposter in his own life. He noticed the way people looked past him, their eyes glazed over with indifference. Was this how it always was? Or had his impending doom sharpened his awareness of his own insignificance? He felt invisible, a ghost haunting the edges of other people's lives. One afternoon, while riding the bus, he struck up a conversation with an elderly woman sitting next to him. She reminded him of his grandmother, with her kind eyes and gentle smile. They talked about the weather, about the city, about nothing of consequence, yet he clung to the interaction as if it were a lifeline. As she disembarked at her stop, she turned to him and said, it was lovely talking to you, young man. You have kind eyes. Her words, simple and genuine, pierced through the numbness that had settled over him. For a fleeting moment, he felt seen, acknowledged, but the moment passed, leaving him with a profound sense of loss. He thought about all the things he would never experience, all the milestones he would miss. He would never see his children graduate, walk his daughter down the aisle, hold his grandchildren in his arms. The thought of these unwritten chapters of his life filled him with a deep, aching sadness. He took out the photograph he carried with him everywhere, a picture of him and Sarah from happier times. Their smiles were wide, their eyes filled with hope and the promise of a future together. He traced the outline of her face with his thumb, his heart constricting with a pain so intense he could barely breathe. He had convinced himself that his sacrifice was noble, that he was choosing love over life. But as the days dwindled down, doubt gnawed at him, whispering insidious questions in his ear. Was he making the right decision? Was he sacrificing his life for a love that had already faded, for a future that was no longer attainable? The weight of the unwritten future, of all the possibilities extinguished by his choice, pressed down on him with suffocating force. He was trapped in a labyrinth of his own making, the walls closing in, leaving him with no escape.
he found himself standing in front of the bathroom mirror, staring at his reflection. The man staring back at him was a stranger, his face haggard, his eyes haunted by a secret too heavy to bear. He barely recognized the hollow shell that remained. He reached out, his fingertips brushing against the cold glass. The surface was cracked, a spiderweb of broken lines distorting his reflection. He saw the fear in his own eyes, the desperation clinging to him like a shroud. Was this the face of a man who had found peace, who had made the ultimate sacrifice for love? The weight of his lie, the carefully constructed facade he had built around himself, threatened to crumble. He had told Sarah he was going away, finding a fresh start, a chance to rebuild his life. He had painted a picture of hope, of a future he knew he would never see. He had convinced himself that his lie was a kindness, a way to spare her the pain of his decision. But as he stared at the broken reflection staring back at him, he knew the truth. He was a coward hiding behind a veil of deception, sacrificing his life not for love, but for an escape from his own failures. The day of the planned accident arrived like a shroud, cloaking Phoenix in a chilling premonition. He went through the motions, a puppet dancing to the strings of his desperate plan. He met Razor at a desolate warehouse district, the air thick with the stench of decay and the ghosts of forgotten industry. It felt fitting, this desolate backdrop for the final act of his own self-destruction. He handed Razor the agreed-upon sum, the money feeling like ash in his hand. It was everything he had left, a blood offering for his own demise. Razor counted the bills with a dispassionate air, his cold eyes betraying no emotion. He outlined the staged accident, a hit and run, while Phoenix was crossing a deserted street. It was brutally simple, coldly efficient. As Phoenix stood there, the weight of his decision crushing him, he saw a flicker of something in Razor's eyes, a brief flash of hesitation, of doubt. But it vanished as quickly as it had appeared, replaced by the bookie's usual impassivity. Razor turned and walked away, disappearing into the labyrinthine maze of warehouses, leaving Phoenix standing alone on the precipice of oblivion. Phoenix closed his eyes, bracing himself for the impact that would end it all. He waited, his heart pounding in his chest, his breath catching in his throat. He waited for the screech of tires, the blinding headlights, the crushing blow that would erase his existence. But it never came. He opened his eyes to find himself still standing there, alone and very much alive. The hours that followed were a blur of confusion and disbelief. Phoenix wandered the streets adrift in a sea of unanswered questions. Had Razor betrayed him? Had he gotten cold feet? Or was this all part of some twisted game? He returned to the warehouse district, but Razor was gone, vanished like a phantom. He went back to the apartment, his heart pounding in his chest, dreading what he might find. He half expected to see Sarah, her face stained with tears, clutching his goodbye letter in her hand. But the apartment was empty, untouched. The letter and the money were still in the drawer, undisturbed. It was as if time had stood still, frozen in the moment he had walked out the door. Days turned into weeks, and the initial shock gave way to a numbing sense of displacement. He had orchestrated his own death, meticulously planned his exit from the world, and yet he remained. He was a ghost, tethered to a life he no longer recognized, haunted by the specter of his own desperate act. He never saw Razor again, never learned why the plan had failed. Had there even been a plan? Or had he been a pawn in a game he didn't understand? The question gnawed at him, a constant reminder of his own folly, his brush with oblivion. He was left with the crushing weight of his actions, the knowledge that he had been willing to sacrifice everything, including his own life, for a lie. The experience had changed him, irrevocably altering his perception of life and death. He was no longer the same man who had walked into that desolate warehouse district. He was a survivor, a ghost returned from the brink. But what did it mean to survive a death you orchestrated yourself? What kind of life could he possibly build on a foundation of such profound loss and regret? These were the questions that haunted him now, the echoes of a desperate act that had failed to silence the demons within. Thank you for your time. Stay tuned for more from Rodney's Publishing.
so don't forget to pick up your copy of Leave Room for Human Errors.